Welcome everyone to our November 15th, 2023 Experiential Gift Giving webinar. My name is Katie Frederick with the APH Connect Center. I'm a digital content manager for Vision Aware, where we focus on the needs of adults, older people, and professionals in the field. And want to welcome you all to this evening's webinar. Um, we are not, there is no um, credit for today. We're just glad to have you here and hopeful, hoping to give you some um, gift ideas for the upcoming holiday season. So um, as we go through the presentations tonight and are talking, if you do have additional ideas that you'd like to share with us, we are putting together a resource handout that we will distribute after the webinar. So do feel free to put those items in the chat. We appreciate that. And um, I would like to introduce my other colleagues who are with me this e evening to help make this webinar possible. We have Melissa Matthews. Hi, I'm Melissa Matthews, and I am the Digital Content Manager for Family Connect. So I support families who are raising children who are blind or low vision and all of their support systems. All right, and next we have one of our uh, Vision Aware Peer Advisors, and she, a woman who wears many hats, um, Liz Botner. Welcome, Liz. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. All right, and another special guest with us, um, another peer advisor has joined us this evening, um, Cindy Schaffner. Welcome to you, Cindy. Hey, hey guys. Yeah, my name is Cindy. I'm an accessibility specialist by day and a content creator by night and mom. I wear a lot of different hats as well. And uh, But you can catch all of my content creation as seeing blind. Great. And Richard Retta. Hi, good evening. Uh, Richard Retta, assistant director with the APH Connect Center, and I oversee Career Connect and as well as helping the team out everywhere needed here at the Connect Center. Thank you. So this year with our gift giving webinar, we've done this for a while now, the gift giving webinar concept, but we decided to change things up a little bit this year and we divided it into two parts. And this is, so this is part two. So um, part one is uh, available, will be available for you to watch up on our YouTube channel along with this video. Um, but we're talking this year about a concept called experiential gift giving. And this is something that um, was kind of new to me in terms of I hadn't heard of the term before, but the concept makes a lot of sense. So, um, Melissa, would you like to explain just what exactly we mean when we say experiential gift giving? Absolutely. As a mom of two children, I'm well aware that we have gone through stages where we have so much stuff and so many things that we no longer need all of those things. And so this is just a concept to uh, build memories and do different experiences with your children or family member or loved one um, and creating those memories rather than having all of those things fill up space and um, just take over our lives. Sometimes it's, it's a lot to declutter at, at times. So memories are wonderful and experiences are fabulous. That is great. And we've touched a little bit on, in part one, we talked a little bit about some music and fashion and other things that might be experiential gifts. But today we're going to focus more on um, sports and toys and games and technology and whatever else our creative minds will think of. But um, Melissa, I know you have some some thoughts for those who might be um, might have children or being more in the family space. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I'm so excited to share because again, this is, oh gracious. Hold on. Can you hear her? The dog or no? no. Okay. No. Sorry. It was a moment. It's, if it's not one thing, it's another. Um, <laughs> so I am very excited because as I have two children and have worked with many various age children. Um, I'm excited to share things about hobbies and some gift giving for those of us who really do feel the need to give that particular item. Um, talking about hobbies, crafting materials, 
those are always a good thing. I think sometimes it's also fun to take the child with you to go to the craft place so that they can choose and feel and explore the various options if they're just beginning to explore crafting. Journals and coloring books. These are two of my favorites. And I have found there are gel crayons that smell that are super easy to color with. It takes very little and they're very vibrant. And who doesn't love a smelly crayon? I know that sounds really crazy, but they are like my favorite crayons. Um, and then continuing on, games, cards, materials, and items to make that game accessible. I think the experience of making a game accessible with your child and talking through what is working, what doesn't work, how can we make this better, makes an opportunity for a family to really gather around and really enjoy the process as well as playing the game in the end. As far as other hobbies, camping gear, I know in Indiana, we are not thinking about camping. However, how fun would it be on the, you know Christmas day or New Year's Eve to have a camping experience in your house? So put up a tent and sleep in a family room or somewhere else, even when it's cold outside or those who live in much nicer weather, why not consider camping in the winter? Um, bowling passes, gardening tools, and subscription boxes. There's a lot of subscription boxes for gardening and hands-on um, exploration. As far as experiences, these are some of my favorites and it reminds me of some of the things that we've already done with our kids, but cooking and baking classes. Joann's and Michael's and even connecting with a local bakery would be a great Oh, no, you're kidding some out. of these really good at making pies types of things um a painting class we have painting with a twist and board and brushes but they also have kids classes i know when we say painting with a twist we think of a girl's night out but they do usually have some kids classes that might be a really good opportunity for your child to engage with something new woodworking class I wouldn't even know where to start, but I can guarantee if I started throwing things out on Facebook or connecting with um, some family members, they might know somebody who could help some, you know, help my child build something. Um, or I think it's uh, Home Depot that also has classes. Tickets to a play or show, hobby could be acting or a theater class, um, maybe watching a performance or even again, going on a camping trip. When it comes to sports, I think this one's always fun. I have two kids that play, well, one plays soccer and the other one's a gymnast, but it's never ending the materials or the equipment that they need. So it could be maybe they need new materials. Maybe they are going to explore baseball and you want to purchase a beat ball for them or take them to a game. That'd be an experience, but maybe it's a jersey of their favorite player. I mean, how fun is that? Again, it could be an experience to go to a game. It could be a sports lesson or an opportunity to meet an athlete. I think camps are also great experiences, camp abilities or connecting with different camps that you have through Parks and Rec, creation in your town um, are great sports opportunities for your children. When it comes to toys and books, this is kind of the next little section. It is so fun to get kids toys, but I know a lot of times we're not sure what to get them. So some of my favorite places to look, one is called Toy Like Me. Now she is out of the UK, but she has an Amazon wish list that is so fabulous. So these are going to be like the, they're not the American Girl doll. There's the uh, Target version, the Journey Girl that has a cane or other toys that are representations of children with disabilities. So I absolutely love that she's kind of put this wish list together. It also includes books as representation. I know as a book lover myself, it's always hard to find books with children who have similar disabilities or visual impairments as my kids. So she's already done the hard work. Fat Brain Toys is another one that I absolutely love. It's really high contrast color. They have smaller like fidget type pop it things and a lot of different early STEM activities. They're super fun and they grow through quite a bit of the ages. Um, so they do get pretty advanced for some of them. Story boxes is one of my favorite things for families to create and put together for their kids. 
And basically a story box is taking your favorite story. It could be um, if you give a mouse a cookie and you're putting together those realistic items for your child to experience the story through. So give a mouse a cookie. It could be a cookie scented candle. It could be a cup representing the milk. There's, I think, a ball and a pencil. And you just kind of put all these things together. And when you're reading the story, you present these items in the order that the story goes through. And I had one family that all of their families created, family members created story boxes. And after Christmas, this kid had 20 story boxes. How amazing. And it was everything from G.I. Joe and the dinosaurs to the fairies and the princesses. It was fabulous. Um, it could be materials to make stories more accessible. Going through Joanne's or even APH has textures, um, stickers that you can put onto books that make them a little bit more accessible for your kids to feel um, and experience the stories. Um, and as far as experiences, I know these are going to sound a little silly. Again, some of the kids I go to my kids' age, um, a slime making class. Uh, it could be experiencing uh, making a toy accessible and learning how to wire it and make the battery not work, but the switch does work and learning kind of all of those pieces to it. Maybe an experience is writing a book themselves and using Amazon KDP to publish that. Um, it could be working with an author if they really love and they're passionate about writing and seeing them in their book, it could be a blog lesson or a class. And I know sometimes as we talk about these experiences, it's hard or we get overwhelmed, like that sounds like a great idea, but where would I even go to even consider doing some of these experiences? So consider reaching out to your school. They may have art teachers who are willing to provide a class could be a woodworking, could be a tech teacher. Um, it could be other local artists. It could be Home Depot or a wood shop. Um, I guarantee if you get on a Facebook like marketplace and those types of things and you start asking for, you know, who knows somebody, who knows somebody or who's selling some, there's a gentleman here who has these amazing tea, like uh, coffee tables and this that, and the other. I'm sure there's somebody who knows somebody that would be more than happy to probably work with you to create an experience. What about a bakery? And I mentioned Joanne's and Michael's or another craft store. Out School is a great place that they have single classes as well as series of classes that might be right up your child's alley as to something that they're interested in, writing a book, um, learning a new sport, or those types of things, or learning how to draw, or different crafts. Um, reaching out to Camp Abilities, is another resource to see if there is a camp near you for your summer fun. <sighs> okay, Katie, I think I, I think I covered. Yeah. Uh, That's a great <laughs> list. <Not yet. laughs> you sure you don't have any more hidden in your pocket, Melissa? No, I'm sure I don't. We're not <laughs> inviting anyone else into the room in my house, so we're good. <laughs> I think those are great ideas to think about for families and some really unique ones too, in terms of, you know, something even like camping. Um, I know when I was little, you know, doing that with my family was, was definitely an experience uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, something that I have uh, memories of. So really good ideas for getting outdoors. Thank you. Um, next, um, Liz, I think you have a couple of gifts that kind of transcend all ages, correct? Um, if they were the ones I shared with you previously, yes. is that you? Okay. Wasn't sure if I could share those. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so, but yes, I do have, have, uh, two things that I wanted to share, but even before that, um, if for those listening who may have relatives who are adults who are newly blind, just because they're, you know, they've just recently become blind does not mean that they need to stop doing the hobbies and things that they did before. And so they still can be, and I hope are interested in doing those things. Uh, so if they you know like to sew or do some like a needlepoint or some sort of craft, those things can be done with tools and strategies and adaptations. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, but I do have two different types of experience type gifts. Uh, the first one is uh, for any age. These things are for any age. Uh, the first one potentially more so than the second, but. The first one is uh, signing the, the child or adult up to 
receive service, service through the National Library Service uh, to receive materials, whether it's books, magazines, uh, and the books are in, and the content is either in a talking book format with human narrators or braille format, whether that's hard copy or digital braille, uh, uh, or and or music scores as well. A lot of a lot of music content also. So if if the person is a musician and they are maybe lose their sight or they're losing their sight, there is still a way for them to receive their music that they might want to still play, and hope I hope they do. Uh, so signing up for the library uh, to receive services through the National Library Service uh, is definitely one way to help engage your family member uh, or loved and or a loved one in uh, still being an active participant in what they want to be actively participating in. Their books on all sorts of hobbies and sports and crafts and things like that in the in the collection. Uh, at, at their fingertips once they are signed up. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention is uh, related to financial literacy. And financial literacy is extremely important to all of us, whether we're blind or low vision or fully sighted. But it's more important to those of us who are blind or who have low vision that it be made accessible and understandable to us because so often it is not. And there is an organization that is helping bridge that gap and kind of make that seat at the table possible to have accessible financial literacy resources and education resources. And that organization is Penny Forward. Uh, and that organization, uh, they do offer membership types. Uh, one of them is a, a guest membership at no cost. Uh, so anyone could go to the pennyforward.com website and learn about that. And I also, the website for the National Library Service is loc, for Library of Congress, dot gov forward slash nls for National Library Service. Uh, so those are my two, my two initial ideas. I also, uh, for the kid and or kid at heart, uh, Braille Legos are also a really fun thing to have as an ex kind of also as an experiential gift. Yes, it is a material thing, but you can have experiences with your child or even as an adult. Uh, shameless plug, I have some. That's okay. Um, <laughs> but you can have fun kind of playing with them. And if you're a younger kids just enjoying yourself and or practicing your braille and letters and things like that. So that is definitely something I wanted to mention as well. So those are a few things off the top of my head that I can think about. Thank you. Liz, can you talk a little bit more about um, NLS that's well known, but, but Penny Forward, the, the financial literacy is so important, as you said, for all of us. And so you mentioned the, the guest uh, memberships. What other types of memberships are available, and maybe what does one um, get with those memberships? Because I, okay. I think this really is a unique <laughs> opportunity for people. That's fine. I just didn't know how much I am. Um, I am involved sure. actually in both of the things that I mentioned. Um, I work at NLS. I'm not speaking in official capacity at the moment, but I am the assistive technology specialist for those who don't know at the National Library Service. Uh, I am also the current vice president of Penny Forward. Uh, so it's shameless plug, not really, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but Penny Forward, we offer uh, we offer financial literacy and education resources in different ways. Uh, we offer accessible online self-paced courses related to different financial re related topics. Uh, right now we have five courses, uh, taking on taxes, digging out of debt, Concerned about credit, simplifying social security and budgeting and banking basics. Yes, we like alliteration. Um, we also do members uh, weekly group chats on different rela different financial related topics. Right now in November, we are spotlighting those who have careers in the financial field. Uh, we also offer uh, finance one on one and group financial financial coaching and counseling. 
Uh, so, and as I said, we do have a guest membership and we are growing our offerings and services you know, as time goes on. So stay tuned for other things. Uh, we do have a guest membership. So any, and we do have a, a mobile app. We have a website and a mobile app that anyone can download on your app store of choice, be that Apple or Android, uh, penny forward, two words. Uh, you can sign up on that app at the moment as a guest. We are working to get our paid tiers of membership available in the app. They are not at the moment. Uh, but our, speaking of our paid tiers of membership, we have a monthly membership uh, tier at $9.99 a month and a yearly membership tier at $99 a year. Uh, so those are our three current membership types. Uh, and the guest membership does get you a limited amount of offerings. Uh, and they the offerings at the guest membership level will most likely be changing from time to time. So you'll always get something. It just may not be the same thing all the time. Great. Well, and you also have a podcast. Is that correct? For we, yes. Thank you. We do have a podcast, uh, which I also co-host. Uh, and the podcast is available any and to, to anyone, uh, whether you're, a, if, although if you're a monthly or yearly member, you do get early access to that podcast a week earlier than it is released to the public. Uh, but on that podcast, we talk about different uh, things, whether it's finance related or just blindness related. We will interview people uh, in the blindness community, uh, whether they're uh, practitioners or professionals or just people who are blind and low vision themselves trying to make it in the world. Uh, and you know, some some of those individuals have had a, a business and started a business. We interviewed the first blind actor on a Star Trek episode. The Paramount Plus series had a, an actor who was blind uh, who from Canada who... Uh, and actually, we interviewed a woodworker. Uh, George Wurzel is uh, a woodworker. And so speaking of woodworking, um, <laughs> but but yes, we do have a podcast. So those might be some really good ways to get some of those experiences. You know, if people are looking for, well, how do I, you know, how might I do that hobby or perform that hobby that I used to do? Um, and we also have a section on our Vision Aware website um, for hobbies and crafts where we have a lot of sections on you know how to how to woodwork and craft and different um, things like that so there there is information out there on that as well <clears throat> thank you so much liz um, i want to turn it now to um, cindy who has some um, ideas for us this evening welcome cindy thanks thanks guys so i I have to say, I love Melissa's. Um, one of the, we actually, our list kind of crossed over a little bit there for a bit. I have to also throw my recommendation behind the um, Fat Brain brand of <laughs> different toys and things. That has definitely been a big hit in my household as well. I really love that. Those are, those have definitely been engaging toys and a toy brand that has really helped to motivate my kids off of screens. So I think that's definitely um, a priority that parents around the world can appreciate is, is getting them things that's going to get them off those uh, screens and really, especially if there's an educational component. Uh, for me, in the vein of experiential types of gift giving, first, I, I do have a Facebook page that um, is associated with seeing blind. And I have a group there that's a private group. And almost every single day currently as time of recording right now, it is, you know, the Amazon sales are in full swing right now. So it's hopping over there at a lot of retail stores, but especially in the detail or in the digital online sector. And um, I've been listing just deals that stand out to me that, um, you know, I think everyone can benefit from that just make great gift ideas that inspire everyone. And I've been listing them every day. And tonight I've actually been focusing on something that falls in this experience, um, kind of category, which are subscription boxes that, um, 
we have actually been getting subscription boxes. Thankfully, my mother-in-law gifted my children this uh, almost about two years ago now. So my daughter gets a snail mail box and it is a lovely box that she gets every single month that it really encourages her to write little notes, send birthday letters just to whoever's birthday it is that month. It has a theme. It has fun, a little plushie or toy or like a pens or just different different little gadgets in there that really kind of help stimulate her in practicing her writing because she's in elementary school. And my son, who is just now a kindergartner, when he first started this, he was in preschool and he gets uh, a craft box every month. And I love his craft box because I, as a blind mom, really, really struggle <laughs> first gathering gra all the right crafting materials and trying to walk him through all these processes and I love that the 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 craft box that he gets that I've selected specifically for his age group and you can get on Amazon and and search you know for specific ages the type of box that you're looking for they have hundreds and hundreds now uh, but it comes with this little booklet that explains everything and the booklet has a QR code on it and when I take our tablet, I'll scan the QR code and it takes us to a website full of video tutorials. And that has been a lifesaver for me. I don't have to kind of get my Seeing AI document scanner out and, and go step by step with him. I am able to just kind of play that tutorial for him and he and I can craft together and I'm not having to like be the one to, this always got my instructor hat on, trying to, you know, figure out, read this and figure that like, do I have all the right materials? Did I order everything right? Whatever the case may be, it comes all together in this box every month. And it it's it comes in multiple formats of instruction so that it's a little bit more accessible um, for us. I, I think it's a fabulous idea. It's something that is new every single month. And it's again, not one of those toys that they're going to play with for a couple of times. And then it's going to collect dust in the room and it's and you know just another one of those things that just kind of clutters so I really appreciate the idea of those little subscription boxes oftentimes you can set a reminder for yourself and just say hey I'm going to give you this box for three months and then set a reminder to cancel that subscription or you can ask if the parents want to take it over or, or just kind of you know uh, communicate uh, with that, but they make a really great gift. And um, I, I feel like it's one of those things that's engaging and gets them off those screens. Um, as far as some other ideas, I too believe that it doesn't matter what your ability or disability is and where you are in the spectrum of things. If you have a hobby that you want to continue, have done, things have changed, you still have that desire and passion for it, I still believe there is a way. And so I definitely think um, having any kind of like looking for any kind of private tutoring lessons, seeing if there's someone in your local community that you can reach out and say, hey, um, I noticed that you offer a class on knitting at our local knitting shop. Do you happen to have one-on-one -on -one sessions? Uh, and and get that right, or maybe see if you can book that for them. I always, though, anytime I'm doing, like, a, I've done lots of video content over the years just with tips and tricks on gift giving and things like that, and I always tell everyone that if you're going to get them some sort of experience, whether it's tickets to a concert, whether it's tickets, something to an event, or lessons, or something like that, to also consider transportation for that person, because sometimes transportation is the make it or break it for a gift. It could be a wonderful gift, but if transportation is that much of an issue, for some people, that's just enough of a hassle and frustration and hoop to jump through that they never end up fulfilling that gift or they never end up claiming that time that you purchased for them um, for that event or they end up missing it or they never book it. So consider throwing that in and say, hey, I would love to do this for you or I would love to be your transportation. Let's work together and schedule it together so that I can make sure that you get this done and it's what you um, it's you know it's a true gift that's that you're really covering all your bases. Um, 
And so uh, with that in mind, I think also getting people like uh, you can also gift people Uber rides, uh, Lyft rides. You can get ride sharing um, types of gift giving. You can get um, delivery services for Target and Walmart. You can get their subscriptions and give them a Walmart Plus subscription. And, you know, these are all things that I think a lot of, especially parents like myself, those little subscriptions annually, they add up over time. And having that taken care of by a family member is like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Because now I feel like that's more money in my pocket that I feel like I could put elsewhere um, for our family needs. And it's great when I have other people in my life recognize that that is something important to my family and a great accommodation that I love taking advantage of. Um, but I, I, so one of the things that I also do because I actually really, I really love browsing. I, I usually try, I love researching this stuff and price checking and things like that. So if, uh, if anybody does want more ideas for that difficult person in their life, whether they are the disabled person or you are the disabled person and just trying to find other people, <laughs> what does a sighted person like? I don't know. Um, any kind of gift inspiration like that, I do have an Amazon storefront. I'll pass along that link um, to Katie and um, to add, but on that, there's lots of gift ideas for him, for her, for low vision, blind life, general household items that everyone can use in their day-to-day -day life. But maybe, you know, you're, you want to know, okay, what is a really good accessible air fryer? What is a really good, um, you know, gadget for measuring cups and spoons? You know, these are all things that I um, have personally tried. And a lot of the items that I try to put on these lists are things that I, I know have worked for me or someone else. And, um, but uh, I, I've got all kinds of deals lists going on right now. So that's the primary focus. I can't say that I've claimed uh, that I've tried every single product on the list because sometimes it's just all about the deal when it comes to this season. But um, definitely check out the Amazon storefront and my Facebook page for great inspirations, ideas that will hopefully guide you. And anyone is also welcome to email me at seeingblind101 at gmail.com. And I'd love to help you out. Thank you so much, Cindy. Those are great ideas. And we will, again, as I said earlier, put links in a handout and there are some links in the chat as well. Um, I did put in chat our section on the Connect Center website um, in the Vision Aware area about enjoying recreation and leisure activities after vision changes or um, mm. other uh, blindness. So do you feel free to check out that section. We have everything in there from, you know, playing games and cards to um, you know, more sports and exercise minded things. So, um, but I want to next turn things over to my colleague, Richard. And Richard, I know you've had some experiences, um, maybe doing some traveling and some hiking and camping and things with some organizations. Do you want to share a little bit about those? Anything else you want to share with us? Tonight? Um, after um, that, but I do want to mention that some things that I had come up with for hobbies and that might interest people could include um, in making those those experiences and those gifts tangible. Um, there are uh, large print and braille greeting cards out there that you could pur purchase from many of those uh, agencies out there like National Braille Press uh, and, and many others. Um, places like Starbucks have uh, gift cards that are brailled. And or you can braille those as well. So and and or another cool experience uh, that people often like, and doesn't have to just be for the holidays, could be for birthdays and other big events, is uh, singing telegrams, uh, which I think is cool. People like music. And as Cindy said earlier, um, a lot of adaptations and uh, thinking of the person, you know, transportation has come up on both webinars and, and making it an accessible event from beginning to end is going to really top off that experience. You might have the experience, but you, might, you may not have the wheels to get there. And if you're going out to a place in the country or far out where Uber and Lyft don't go, really being considerate of how are you going to get there uh, is, is very thoughtful. Um, for travel, yes, there are many, many organizations, uh, 
out there, um, Mind's Eye Travel, uh, Travel Eyes, Wilderness Inquiry that provide a lot of curated uh, events, uh, outings from real easy glamping to real adventurous uh, trips or even cruises where you can go in groups of two to 20 and, and have those experiences uh, globally, whether it's in, in their backyard, across the pond. I know Katie has been to France um, and, and going with like-minded people who like those, have those, those real tangible, meaningful life, life experiences. And, and when you receive the uh, handout, those, those uh, webinar or web pages will be on that list. That's it. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, also, we do have um, not not so much a, a gift, but something for people to check out throughout the year. Um, kind of where um, what Liz was talking about with with the Penny Forward podcast, um, we do more of a of an informational interview where we talk to people in different um, professions and our career conversations. So. Um, that might be something that's, it's, you know, something that we offer in the Connect Center that where it gets people to thinking about different experiences and different careers that might be available to them. So um, that may be something to look at for, you know, telling people to look at in next year as well, one of the offerings that we have here in the Connect Center. Um, does anyone in the audience have anything they want to share or put in chat? We have had a couple of questions about the um, the Braille Braille Legos, someone was asking about those, and I know that um, I actually don't have some, and I'm feeling a little left out now because um, some of my colleagues do. But um, I know those are kind of good for really learning and practicing Braille, right? I believe um, Melissa or Liz, if you want to speak to, it's a little bit hard to build with them because of the way that they're that the Braille is. Um, added to the Legos, it makes building something actually a bit challenging, but they are a good tool for, for learning and practicing Braille. Is that correct? I would say I can answer unless Liz, if you would like to. You can answer. It's fine. Um, I, I do have several sets. Katie, I'll bring one down in a couple of weeks and you can play. Um, but it does have the print and the Braille. It has all of the letters of the alphabet. It is, um, does have some numbers and the number sign, I do believe, and some simple punctuation. But again, the complexity is that when you have the letter A and you're trying to build on top of it, there's really only the one dot. So it does make it a little bit challenging where the typical Legos have, you know, two and you're stacking two, 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 or four or eight or however that goes um, and however you're building. So there is a little bit of that, um, but they do come with a really large, uh, slate kind of a flat surface um that you can build your legos they're i i love them they're fun i've got some things that i could also add to this i cannot remember for the life of me who the original creator of this idea was that i um, saw this idea on social media somewhere for but um they uh, use the lego braille bricks to make little coded messages to each other um it's i'm not sure if the mom was totally blind or if it was one of the children but they she the mom was able to teach the whole family braille and it was like this new little fun family activity they would leave little messages within the braille using the braille uh, Legos and write little messages to each other each morning or at the end of the day, or, you know, I'm so excited, I love you, or just little things like that. And it was a great way to they work, they were able to work on spelling, they were able to work on just, you know, that family connectivity together. But using this little special code also gave the kids like this little kind of secret, uh, type of approach to it that really gave it a cool spin um, but I have heard that as well as far as um, being kind of having a difficult time using them in with other lego bricks because some do not have the full cell but uh, definitely it's a great thing that I'm very thankful lego opened that up to um, the public this year it was usually um, I think just available for free to uh, educators um, 
Braille teachers and such, but I think that opened up about six months or so ago, and I'm so thankful. I think it's really been a fun addition for a lot of families. It really is a good way to make make things fun and accessible for everyone, too, so that's, that's very cool. Yeah. Um, we do have a question in chat that I'm going to throw out. Where can people get accessible bingo cards? I wonder if Maxi Aids would um, <laughs> do that, or LSNS. Um, I mean, those yeah. places come to mind. Or right. sometimes people make them. <laughs> you can make an experiential yes. activity by making them at home. There you go. <laughs> um, right. So those are a couple of sources. And again, we will put these in our in our handout and email it out following the webinar. Um, a quick question for you, um, Liz, if you know, we had a question earlier about um, accessible crosswords and word games. Um, doesn't NLS have, I think there are some magazines that have word games and things in them. Do you know offhand or? Yes, th there are some magazines. I'm blanking at the moment on the name of the magazine. Uh, I think but like Conundrum maybe? That is one, that is one of them, but I there's also, I believe, another one that's specifically about crosswords. But Conundrum is is a actually yes, they that is another magazine as well. Um, so we'll try to get that in the handout. Some fun magazines, um, in addition yeah. to magazines that cover topics like computers and um, other you know other hobby type topics, outdoor type of events as well. So there are, there's a wide variety of um, Hobbies and interest in the in the NLS magazine collection section. So yes, and it's not a magazine, but for technology people who have who have a smartphone or a tablet, I don't know if it's on Android, but I know it's on iOS. There's an app called Seven Little Words, and it is a crossword puzzle like app. It gives you clues and the letter equivalent of whatever the answer is, and then you have letters at letter configurations at the bottom that are kind of scrambled. Uh, and so you would put them together to form words. So, and that's a free app. So that reminds I me just... of that Franklin uh, dictionary. Oh my gosh. <laughs> language, language master. master. Yes. Thank you. Thing. I have yes. one actually. Uh, and it's it still fine, works. Um... It does a good device. <laughs> Has anyone, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I have Newsline. Um, through yes. the NFB. I don't know if news, I know it has access to tons of magazines in addition to the news and articles and things like that. I'm wondering if any of those magazines um, put through the Newsline app, if that is, I don't know, I, has it, I've never tried it, but I'm curious. Off the top of my head, I am not remembering a magazine like that that's available on Newsline, but I haven't gotcha. looked in a while, so that could have changed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they just have the text of the magazine, so I'm not sure how that would be accessible. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know I think Apple you're right. News has magazines as well. If you have Apple News, there are some magazines in that. But again, um, you can also subscribe to periodicals through Bookshare, and you can get it on Daisy. I I know you can get it like in the Voice Stream app. Um, yes. And there are certain apps out there that cost money that might be good, like uh, Blind Square or Voice Stream Reader or other things that are you know, 10 20 30 dollars that people may that not are have. not crossword related but <laughs> yes just wanted to mention that we, we've shifted slightly from talking right. about crossword puzzles <laughs> i think yes. this kind of highlights like how important and it, it's it's almost a catch-22 i think for the older generations that really still do prefer to have that pen and paper experience but you know, considering that we're, we've entered into a really awesome digital world where there are apps for a lot of these types of things and lots there of are. ways to access this um, type of activities, hobbies and things like this uh, digitally, but you do have to kind of have a smartphone. You do have to know how to download the apps and, and yes. kind of operate in that digital space. 
to have access to it. So I think it's one of those things of think of the person or yourself, what are your strengths, your weaknesses? Is it something that you think you can maybe a, a great way to maybe gateway yourself into using a smartphone or a new app or something like that, because you're motivated, it's fun, you're going to get those dopamine hits every time you, you know, finish a puzzle or whatever the case would be, but you're every single time you expose yourself to these digital forms of uh, new content, new hobbies, new things, it's, you're going to be learning new assistive technology along the way as well. And that's going to kind of tick off two boxes at once. So I think this could be also a great gateway, um, you know, to improving your technology skills by maybe pairing it with some of these other fun hobbies that you like to do and challenging yourself to maybe see, okay, if I'm no longer finding the pen and paper method accessible anymore, how can I maybe develop the skills in a fun way of accessing it digitally? That is a great way to, a uh, great note to end on. So thank you very much, Cindy and Liz, <laughs> Richard and Melissa for your thoughts and ideas this evening. Thank you to those of you who put ideas and suggestions and ask questions in the chat. And um, we hope that these webinars have given you some different ideas to think about this year as you start to plan your holiday um, gift giving. And um, again, you can find these um, following our presentation. They'll be available on our YouTube channel in a couple of weeks. And we will also send out a handout to registrants. Um, if you have questions about anything, you can always email us at connectcenter at aph.org or check out our website for our blogs and articles about gifting ideas at aphconnectcenter.org. And with that, I wish you all a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.